This is Liam Witte from Lubot Electronics and today we'll be looking at the X1 Mini 3D printer from Easy 3D. The printer comes nicely packaged, quite compact, partially assembled. There is essentially four screws that you need to uh, attach. It comes in a box of styrofoam. Um, it is the cables and wiring is already attached to each other, so care needs to be taken when this when this is unboxed. Um, but other than that, it is quite an easy printer to set up. Everything that's needed comes as part of a package. There's the uh, actual 3D printer that uh, contains all three axes. And then separate to that, there's just the attachment to hold the spool of filament. Now, they don't include a spool of filament and a picture of the show for the spool of filament well, that would be quite a hard spool to get hold of, or, you know, you can probably 3D print that, but point is you don't get a spool as such with all. So that's my only concern at first glance. Um, okay, so it does come with a removable bolt, uh, removable um, bolt plate, which is very, very nice. It means you don't damage your printer when you need to remove a print, which is a big problem, at least with the early printers. Um, so yeah, assembling the printer is quite straightforward. Um, it's literally plugging in the, well, pushing in the plastic parts to where it fits. There's only one way it can fit, and then you need to make sure you push it. There's a little wire that goes through the bottom. And then essentially, um, that's kind of it in terms of, uh, for okay, then you still need to just add the screws, and that's it for the assembly. So the assembly is really, really simple. Um, so yes, this is just the two screws that we need. Thing is just to connect the wire. Um, for the stepper motor controller, and that's just the only wire, uh, electronic wiring connection that you'll have to do. Um, so the final step in the setup would be to attach a spool holder. As mentioned, uh, this is not the greatest design, and um, uh, <laughs> this machine, I think this is probably the weakest part of the machine, is the method how it holds, is supposed to hold the filament. So it attaches quite straightforward. Um, you'll just slide it in, make sure it is nicely aligned, and then tighten the screws. Next up is just to insert the filament into the um, PTFE tubing of the extruder. Um, the, uh, it's simply just a matter of pushing it in all the way until it's it it's the end. Then after that, the next step is to level the bed of a machine. Now, um, by default, you uh, okay. You need to first press the home button so that the machine moves down to its, its lowest position. Then you'll turn off the machine so that you can freely move the motors around. Um, if you don't turn off the machine, then you might damage the machine in as far as you're going to push against motors that are trying to stay into position. So um, turn the, it's at this point, turn the machine off and then physically move and push the motor, uh, the, the platform around. And you have a goal is simply to have a piece of, uh, have a thickness of a piece of paper, it's basically 0 0.1 millimeter. Um, distance between the nozzle and the bolt platform. The next up, it's simply a matter of inserting the, f the f um, SD card and pressing the play button. So whatever is on, whatever model it detects on the SD card, it will start to print. So it is advisable to on okay, so on the SD card, all the software is uh, software and manuals is stored on there, so you that you can copy onto your computer. And then best would be to clear off, delete everything off the SD drive um, so that you can only copy the one single model on that you that you'd like to print. So currently um, there's the rocket model on, this is the default model, and this is what you will get as soon as you press print. And here you can see the quality of a print. Um, 
and yeah this should show you the basic um, uh, concept and setup uh, set guide. So next up we will tackle the software. So far up to this point uh, my first impression is that it is quite a decent machine. It's just the filament um, holder that's a bit of an issue but I'm surprised at the quality of the print. I think it's a good good quality and um, there were no problems uh, I didn't have to restart this is literally the first time that I pressed play and um, everything worked out fine so um, so far the printer and the print quality looks good to get started with the software first of all you okay first of all you'll find the software on the uh, SD card um, there's three different sets of software included here or well they all do the same thing it's just depends on what you want to use and what's easiest so we, there's um, Cura and Easyware and Simplify 3D now all, of, all three of those have a pros and cons um, so for this video and for setup and I think the easiest just to get started with possibly would be to use Cura the next step would be to obtain a model. So there are various ways that you can obtain a model. Um, you know, there are things, sites like Thingiverse and so forth where you can download existing models. And um, from our side, I'm go quickly going to create a little, um, just something to print out. Um, it would be fairly simple. And this is created in Fusion 360. So you can use Fusion 360 or you can use uh, other free software as well. Or you can, uh, you know, something like Blender. It uh, okay. So most of it, just like most software, everything has every package has its pros and cons. Um, where Fusion 360 is free for a year, or currently that's a business uh, licensing model, is it's free for a year, and then you have to pay, and it's quite expensive after that. So, but you, you know, to get started, you can definitely use Fusion 360. Um, alternative to that is if you're looking for something a little bit more artsy and uh, then you'll have a look at uh, Blender for example, uh, Blender 3D. Um, so there are various software packages but essentially all you need is something that can export to a STL file. That is the most important step of of this process. Whatever you use you need a STL file. Whether you download it from the internet or design it yourself, um, it's not it's uh, you know, irrelevant you just need the STL file and that's kind of it um, in terms of f f uh, AutoCAD Fusion 360 there are quite a lot of videos on how to uh, get started and how to use it so I won't be covering that in this uh, video. I'll just be showing how I'm quickly drawing uh, something. This doesn't, uh, you know, I don't have a specific use for this. I'm just drawing this up for a demo to, to see that it can get printed. Um, but you know, there are lots of uh, videos and guides and Fusion 360 is very, very powerful in what you can do. Um, but Blender is also powerful in what it can do, but it's different, different people and different uh, uses. So once you have your model, the next step would be to get Cura completely set up. First of all, you'd want to add your printer. It, it needs to be a custom printer. You give it a name. Uh, it can be any name. And then the important thing is to change the settings. There's the X distance needs to be 90 millimeters, uh, 100 by 100. And then the nozzle is 0 0.4 millimeters and, uh, uh, and 1.75. So you have to be sure that those values are correct. Once that is set, um, your printer is basically set up for the essentially for the X1 mini. There's one, still one step extra that you still need and that is to add the uh, X1 mini's profile. That is part of a software uh, on the SD card. In the Cura folder it is uh, there's a profile setting where you can add it. So this will do all the uh, control the temperature and do all the configurations for your printer for Cura. 
So, and then you're basically done. Now, you, at this point, you can start um, uh, printing. So, you'll just open up your model. On the left hand side, you've got options to rescale and change, uh, uh, you know, do some changes to the model. Not very advanced changes, just basic printing that would determine how it would be printed. So, if the model is too big, you can rescale it. Then, on the right hand side, you've got options such as the infill and the printing speed and so forth. So, um, you know, it depends on how if the density and so that. There's a lot of information on the internet on when to choose what sort of infill, but that would be it. So, what is important to note is that the profile is set to X1, and you can then also change the rest of the settings and so forth. So, that is essentially the core set up to, to get start printed. The uh, next step would be to start uh, to export this to file, load it up onto the SD drive and then plug it into the printer and press the play button. So it is quite normal for the to be a little bit of filament on the side and li a little bit rough on the start because usually with a last batch uh, last print there would be some filament still stuck to the nozzle so the printer kind of needs to get rid of that before it starts printing the rest of the model or the actual model so it would be usually it's a good idea to print on a raft uh, this is the by default the setting but that's a that layer at the bottom so that any rough spots and uh, and so forth is is on the raft itself and the raft is easy to remove from the print so it's made a little bit thinner and that's essentially it okay so my final thoughts on this printer after doing two prints um i don't like the fact that the filament is all over the place i'm sure there are models on fingerverse that would be able to replace the spool holder with something a little bit better um Okay, so the cost is good, the prices are quite cheap, um, so the quality of the print is decent, so that I'm happy with. I'm really happy with the fact that it has a magnetic build plate, so you don't have to hurt your printer and it will last l much longer than without a magnetic build plate. Um, the setup, the hardware setup is really easy, um, the packaging is really compact. Um, so yeah, a lot of good things to be said about it. Um, so I think that would be that would be kind of my final thoughts on it.